Hey guys, I'm back for day two of Flatten the Fear. And so we're going to get started. We're going to jump in. And my first question I have for you, and actually, time out. My wife said, wait a few seconds when you go live because people need to get on. So one, two, three. Okay, my few seconds is over. I'm going to go ahead and get on and get uh, moving with this uh topic today. It's flatten the fear. We're on day two and here's the chart right behind me. You can see it. This is what we're talking about. Just like the virus kind of has a pattern to it that can break through uh, our emotional and mental capacity. Uh, here is the line and what we're talking about is that fear can bust through this just like the virus can break through containment. Our fear can break through containment. And so if you look farther over here, this is the number of fear inputs going up. That could be news media, that could be uh, friends, that could be family, that could be your own thoughts, that could be uh, social media, especially social media. But this is going up, 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 number of fear inputs. And down below, this is the time from the beginning of a crisis. So say our crisis right now is coronavirus. Maybe you have other crises in your life, maybe relational crisis, emotional crisis, health crisis. But as long as the fear inputs keep going up, and time passes, what's going to happen is that fear without any faith inputs is going to spike. Boom. It's going to break through your mental and emotional capacity, and then you're going to be a wreck. Maybe you already are a wreck. It's not too late for you. Down here, we see that if we add faith inputs, what it does, it doesn't necessarily take away all the emotions, but it helps us not break through our capacity so that we can continue to live without falling apart. And so that's what we're going to be talking about because uh, that is what as believers, followers of Jesus, Team Jesus, I got this shirt from my friends Nicole and Carlo, and uh, we want to bring a sense of peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And so we want to bring a sense of peace, a sense of calm, a sense of assurance, knowing that things are going to be okay, uh, regardless of the circumstance that we see around us. And so uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. And so as we do that, um, I do have some stuff that I want to share uh, directly from uh, the Bible, but also just some different tools and stuff that I have. So uh, my first question for you, though, is this. What is the scariest thing that you've ever gone through? What is the scariest thing that you have personally gone through? What did it feel like? How long did the fear last? And did you survive? Okay, spoiler alert. If you're watching this right now, you survived. Okay, let that sink in. Whatever that scariest, most difficult thing is that you've been through. That thing that you thought, I was, there's no way I'll make it through this. This is craziness. You're watching this video because you survived. That's a big deal. You need to remember that. You need to think about that to calm yourself. If you start to get nervous or get fearful or get worry or anxiety. And you need to tell other people that. You know what? You've made it. You're here. You've been through difficult circumstances before. A couple of the things that I've been through, I'd say could be, oh, right up there, it's the most scariest of my life. One is when I was 16 years old, I got shot. I got shot right here through the stomach, out the back with a rifle on a hunting trip. And so I got shot and I almost died. I had to have a colostomy bag for a few months and they took me back in and ended up being able to take that colostomy bag out. And that was great. But the reality is when I first got shot, I had no idea if I was going to live. I was up on a mountain. I really came close to dying. The bullet came out right by my spine. It broke part of my intestine. Uh, I had just all kinds of stuff going on. I was in ICU for quite a while. Uh, so I barely made it. That would be one of the most scariest times of my life. But number two, and I'm not sure which is more scary, getting shot or number two. And number two is if you've ever been to Austin, Texas and gone to the Capitol building, if you take the elevator up, you can walk out to the middle and there's this huge circle balcony and every floor you can walk to the balcony and look down and I went up to like the fourth floor and I looked over that edge and <laughs> I don't like heights and so I'm not sure if looking over the fourth floor of a balcony at the state capitol building at just a hard marble floor was more scary than getting shot but honestly I think it probably was because getting shot was like that I didn't know if I'd live but I just rested that that was out of my control and so I just said, you know what, I, nothing I can do. I'm just laying here. Hopefully I'm going to make it. But when it comes to looking over that balcony, I don't know what to tell you, but boy, the fear is just... So 
someday I need to bungee jump or skydive or something to overcome fear. But I've been through both of those circumstances, both of those circumstances and lived. And so I do have one thing here I want to show you guys. Don't ask me how I got my hands on this, but this is a mask. This can protect me to some degree. Now, depending on what you read, it may not protect me at all, but some people believe that this can protect me from viruses and from things that are outside of my body from coming in and infecting me. But this cannot protect me from fear because fear comes from the inside. It comes from my heart. It comes from my mind and what I'm thinking on, what I'm meditating on. That's where it comes from. And so this right here, totally useless if I'm dealing with fear. And so how can we deal with fear in a way that actually uh, can flatten the curve so that I can stay emotionally stable? Well, part of that is by doing these faith inputs, which is what we're doing. So let's talk about that. I'm going to pull up a verse here that we're going to look at together. There it is. And this says, out of Psalm 62, wait, it says, trust him. Who's him? Well, the hymn that we're speaking of right now is God. Trust God, in other words, at all times, O oh people. I'm talking to everybody. Trust God. Trust Him. Trust the Lord at all times. The Creator, the Maker of heaven and earth, the one that made us. Trust Him at all times, O oh people. It says, pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. This is out of Psalms 62, verse 8. Now here's the thing, we trust him, but trust doesn't mean silence. Trust doesn't mean that you just fake it till you make it. You just close your mouth and just act like everything's great. Oh, I'm totally fine, I'm totally stable, life is good, I got no issues, because I trust in the Lord at all times. That's fake. That's not even what the Bible says. That's not what this verse says. If you look at it, it says trust in him at all times. Guess what, that includes when I got shot, that includes when I look over the ledge at the state capitol. That includes whatever you're going through. Maybe you're losing your job because of the virus situation. Maybe you're having relational stresses at home. Maybe you just became a homeschool teacher. That could be the scariest of all. I saw a meme that said uh, the parents are out scraping the my student is a great or my kid is a great student stickers off the back of their car now because they're actually their teachers. And they're like, oh, I'm in trouble. Look. Whatever you're going through, that's what it's talking about. All times. Not once in a while. All times. So we trust in the Lord at all times, no matter what we're going through. And not just by being silent and being quiet and faking it until we make it. We actually trust in Him by pouring out our hearts. This is my circumstance. This is my, my struggle. This is that difficulty that I'm going through. Lord, I don't know how to trust. Lord, I don't feel good about this. Lord, this is scary. But we pour it out to Him. So that it doesn't remain right here inside of our hearts. We want to get it out. Lord, this is it. I'm giving it to you. I don't know what I... Shelter in place? Do you mean I'm stuck here inside of my house? What if I need to go get a hug? What if I need something? I don't know what to do. Lord, I trust in you. What if I run out of food? Lord, what if my job fires me? Lord, my job already laid me off. What if I can't go back? What if I can't pay my bills? What if I lose my house? What if, what if, what if? But we just pour it out to the Lord. We don't just hold it inside and try to deal with it on our own. But we take it to him. Say, Lord, I'm pouring this out to you. It's yours. Have it. Take it. And then we take refuge in him. Is what it says. Pour it out before him. God is a refuge. What's a refuge? A refuge is a shelter. So guess what this verse is saying? Shelter in place. Yeah. Shelter in place, not in a physical place like a building, not like my home, not a structure, but we're talking spiritually, shelter in place, shelter in the presence of God, shelter in the peace of God. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is the one who covers us. And so you can take all of your fear, all of your emotions, all of your worries, and you can walk right over to whatever spot you want to be at, doesn't matter physically. Walk right over to your bedroom, walk right over to the living room, walk right over to your backyard. It doesn't matter because we're talking spiritual. This isn't physical. Go spiritually, mentally, emotionally to the Lord. Pour out your heart, take refuge, shelter in the place of His presence. 
Shelter in the place of his goodness. Shelter in the place of his trust. That's what God's calling us to do. That's the opportunity that's open for you. God wants to do that. When is this going to be over? I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. Some people are saying it's going to be months, weeks, days. I have no idea. I don't even know how we got here. To me, it's like some introvert found Aladdin's lamp and like started rubbing that thing. Genie pops out. He says, I wish that I was alone. Boom. You got two more wishes. I wish everyone could experience how awesome this is. Boom. Now we're all alone. Now if somebody find that lamp and get the third wish and get us out of here. That'd be awesome. But until then, until then, we can shelter in place physically because that's what we're being asked to do. And just sit there in fear and anxiety and stress and wonder what's going to happen. Or we can do what this verse is telling us to do. Take our spiritual, our emotional, our mental state and go before the Lord at all times, all people, and say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I need you. God, I have anxiety, worry, stress. I don't know what to do with my bills. I don't know what to do with this. I'm lonely. I'm isolated. I don't like this. God, I don't know what's going to happen to my parent or my family member that's in another city or another state. God, I don't know what to do with my kids that I'm homeschooling. Lord, I don't know what to do with my marriage. I've never been around my spouse this long. I'm not sure I can deal with it. Whatever the circumstance is that you're going through in the midst of all the other craziness out there, that you can go and take it to the Lord. And as you shelter in a physical place, also shelter in a spiritual place. Shelter in His grace in his mercy, in his peace. That's what, that's what God would give us as a gift. A place to shelter, a place to have refuge from all of our fears. Now I'm going to look at this curve one more time. And I'm just going to remind you, look, this is what we're talking about. Okay, when a crisis comes, if you look over here, okay, these are the number of fear inputs. That could be news, social media, Friends, family, your own thoughts. How much fear inputs are you letting come in? I'm not talking about reality. There's realities. Be safe. Do the right thing. Wash your hands. Hopefully you're doing that before the crisis. But if not, wash your hands now that there is a crisis. Do all the things that you're supposed to do to take care of yourself and take care of others. But limit the number of inputs coming in for fear. Maybe stay off social media a little bit. Maybe just read the headlines of the news or catch it one cycle. Do you realize that the news basically repeats itself every hour? Same information if you're on the news, on TV. So maybe watch one hour instead of ten. Whatever you need to do, just lower these number of fear inputs so that over the course of time here, so it's talking about over the course of time as this crisis is moving along, you don't bust through this mental and emotional capacity because without faith, inputs, if it's just fear inputs and no faith inputs, you're going to bust through this emotional capacity and you're going to burn yourself out. You're going to burn your family out. You're going to burn your friends out. You're going to blow your mind and be in trouble because you're going to go right through your emo emotional and mental capacity to deal with all of this. Down here, this is faith inputs. If you can continue to add faith inputs, like this video, get in the Bible, pray, talk to people that are encouraging and uplifting, get on and read positive things going on, because a virus is not the only thing going on in the world. A shutdown and a lockdown is not the only thing going on in the world. There's many other things going on. Look for good news. Seek it out. Find it. Add faith and puts. Read a good book. Encourage and build yourself up so that it will help to balance out the fear that's going on here and balance this out and keep you in a place where you can have stability of mind and stability of heart so that you can, within that stability, be a blessing to others. Because that's what God calls us to do as believers is we're supposed to shine our light. We're supposed to love others. We're supposed to encourage others, build others up. You can't do that if you're blasting through your emotional and mental capacity with fear. You have to put faith inputs in to keep yourself below the line of insanity so you can stay stable and think clearly and help others. Okay, I'm going to bring up this first one last time, and then I'm going to end it here. Trust in him at all times. Who? God. All times. Oh, people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. This is out of Psalm 62. So what it's talking about here is the hymn is God. All times means every time. That means right now. 
That means in a crisis, that means in relationships, marriage, homeschooling, everything. No matter what you're going through right now that is a struggle or difficult or a challenge, at all times, trust in Him. Pour out your heart. That means talk to Him about it, tell Him about it, and then receive His peace in place of that. Don't let it just fill up in here. Anxiety and frustration, worry, isolation, loneliness. Don't let it all just build up in here. Pour it out to God. Talk to Him about it. Let Him return His peace to you. And it says, take refuge in Him. For He's a refuge for us, it says. In other words, shelter in the place of His presence. Shelter in the place of His peace. So not only do we have a government mandate to shelter in place, but God gives us the opportunity to shelter in place in place of peace, in place of refuge. I pray God's blessing over you. I pray, I pray God's grace over you. I pray that you'd be able to continue to seek out and to find places of faith input. Whether that's online or in person, seek out faith input so that your heart and your mind can be filled with faith, filled with trust, and God will bring you peace during these times. Thanks for joining me. I'll be on again tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock.